We want to be able to download data from the internet. This is especially important in applications where a computer is talking maybe to another computer or to a database that's there on the World Wide Web. And we call this, for example, the Internet of Things, where computers are starting to talk to other computers. They need to be able to download data from each other and be able to parse and analyze it. So we're going to be talking about that in Python, how to be able to import data and then be able to analyze it. Uh, where the Python script is essentially acting like a web browser, be able to go get data and then make sense of it. So let's do this with uh, our example today. We're going to do this with some financial data. And this is just a general framework for uh, doing these, uh, this programming. Um, but I'll just call this uh, main.py. You know, just go ahead and create a new Python script, for example. And I'm going to edit it. OK. Um, so now it's going to, we're just going to go through this. This is also for Python 3 plus. Um, I'll write it so you can use it in either one. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is there's different packages to be able to get files from other, uh, you know, from servers or other places. I'm just going to uh, use, in this case, uh, wget. OK. Now, if you don't have that, Go ahead and run it, uh, just see if you have it there. It says no module name wget. Then uh, what I'm going to do is, is just go ahead and um, import pip, first of all, and then pip.main, and I'll install wget. OK, so if you're ever missing a package, you can just run these commands right there with wget, and then import it. OK, so let's run this one again. Okay, and this also works in Anaconda or in Spider as well. And then it'll go down out and uh, and update it and install it for you. Okay, so it says successfully installed. Looks like I need to upgrade my version of pip as well, but it looked like it worked. Okay, and then you can go ahead and remove those. Okay, and the other thing you could do is if you're ever missing a package or you think somebody that you're giving this to may not have that package, in this case, wget. Um, you can always do something like this. OK, there you go. So if they don't have it, then it's going to have an error. It's going to go to the accept. It'll pip install it, and then import it. So let's go on down to the next line. We have a tool now that's going to go out and get a file from the internet. So now we need to create a URL that we want to visit. And I'm going to use an example today. Go ahead and follow along with this. It's just going to be uh, chart.finance.yahoo.com and get a table.csv with a stock ticker. Okay, so I could have something like um, ExxonMobil. And let's see. Uh, I think it's actually just this. There we go. Okay, so you have our URL. And then let's uh, get it with wget. So we'll do wget.download, and we'll get this file in this URL. OK, let's run it again, and we'll save it. And it'll use wget and grab Exxon Mobil stock for us. So let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to open it up with Excel, and you'll see the date. Okay, let me adjust that. Okay, there's the date. So it started, uh, you know, from today, and then it goes down. There are 11,000 columns. It looks like some from 1970 for Exxon Mobil. Um, kind of interesting. That's okay. We got all of the that data for the Exxon Mobil stock. Okay, now once we have that, what we're going to do is uh, we've downloaded data. Uh, we can either, there are a variety of ways that we can get it. We can either open a socket, there's an API, and uh, this, um, you know, this interface that a lot of times websites will have, and they'll have documentation on that and how to connect. Uh, but Python does a very good job also connecting to databases. So sometimes it isn't a file that you're getting, you're actually doing a database query on another server. Okay, so this is just a simple example of how to get some stock data from Yahoo. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and import the data. Um, I'll do a read uh, CSV with pandas. 
Okay, so the next thing I need to do is just import uh, pandas as pd. Okay, and I'll read the CSV and uh, let's just have it do, um, this one's gonna be called table.csv. Okay, there it is. So I've got my data and I'm gonna go ahead and import it now. And then there's some really interesting things that we can do with it now that it's in pandas. So pandas is kind of like a Excel uh, for Python. It makes it really nice to be able to visualize uh, you know, do data, things you can't even do in Excel, you can do in, in Pandas. And uh, it looks like when I ran it again, it grabbed uh, and named it as Table 1. I don't really need that one. But let's just see what we have now. If I do print uh, data, there's going to be a lot of data here. I have these 11,000 rows, but it's all in here. So let's just print instead of 11,000 uh, rows, let's go ahead and just print the first five. Okay, so let's use pandas to, uh, I'll just print my data, and I'll just do zero uh, to five. Okay, there they are, right there, make it a little bit wider so I can see that. And if I just wanted to get, um, you know, data, zero to five, but I just wanted my uh, open price instead, of everything there, then I could just print the open price. And let's say I wanted to plot this now. Well, I want to plot, uh, you know, the data and be able to see the, uh, let's go with the close price. And so then I might do something like, uh, let's see, I'll do import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT and then let's go ahead and get create a new plot with just the data and we'll do the close price and let's just do the last uh, 30 days okay and then show it Okay, and there is my close price for the last 30 days. It's uh, the most recent one is today. So zero is today and then 30 is 30 days ago. But you could flip it so you could see kind of more of a left to right on the time there. Okay, so this is an example of being able to pull data um, from the internet. Okay, it's just these commands right here. Once you have wget, you've imported that and then you have pandas that has read the CSV file, and then you were able to plot some of those values. Okay, let me give you a couple more files that you can look at, um, and you can download these as well. Just come to the CHE 263 website, um, this address right here, and then come down to Python and do data analysis. And you'll see a NumPy tutorial on importing data, pandas tutorial as well with some source code. And then this one right here with a little bit more um, of a full, uh, you can just change, change this uh, stock ticker symbol right there and be able to import any, uh, any stock that you want. Okay, so an example of being able to pull some data from the internet, parse it, and then display those results.